Hey YouTube, so it's the next day. I just got home from work. <sighs> Car's running really well. Sounding good. There we go, I don't know what happened. Yeah, she sounds good, running good. But, I definitely broke something in the front end, either a strut or an axle or control arm bushing. I broke something. So, since I sold the 06, I had some money put back from the car that I was trying to start, you know, a little savings, but I uh, got online, I ordered two brand new front struts, two brand new rear struts, two brand new front lower control arms with the never tear poly bushings just like the same ones I have now see the red bushing down there but I ordered the exact same control arms that I have now just some brand new ones um what else did I order I ordered a dual pass front mount heat exchanger for the Grand Am it's different from the ZZP one but it's uh, it'll work so oh and I also ordered a new uh, core another heater core just like I did the one for the 07. I'm gonna rebuild the the other one for the Grand Dam So it's coming along. It's getting there, but yeah, I've got a whole bunch of new parts coming I got that new fuel pump in yesterday, so I'm gonna I guess have to drop the the tank again this weekend and Try to get that new assembly installed uh, Before I do that though, I'm gonna bring that new assembly out here with that e85 pump and see if i can even take it apart and without breaking it and uh swap out that e85 pump into the assembly and hopefully i can if not i guess i'm just gonna have to i don't know i don't know if i'm gonna order another assembly or what but i'm gonna i'm gonna try to to mess with it if if not i might just throw that new pump in the tank so but really, I don't even know what good that would do. It's, except for it won't be whining. That's really it. But other than that, the car's running great. It's running much better. But now every time I'm going or, you know, stopping and moving again, it makes a lot of clunking in the front end. I can't tell if it's the strut or the control arm. Like, I jacked it up and I wiggled the wheels. It's not the wheel bearing. Axles look fine, but I know the axle on the driver's side i've replaced once already and it was just like a 40 or 50 dollar ebay one and it was it's actually smaller around whenever i compared it uh i'll insert a picture of here But yeah, whenever um, whenever I uh, swapped it out and I ordered that newer one, I compared them side by side, and the original one was way way bigger around and way beefier of an axle. Just the boot got destroyed, so yeah, I had to uh, had to swap it out. But that's what happens sometimes with these cars. Is you know you build them, you have fun, you break stuff fix it and you repeat so I just dropped like six hundred dollars this morning ordering all these different parts and so I've got a bunch of stuff on the way and uh, so now it's just a waiting game but uh, today I want to try to get that E85 pump installed in the new assembly and I also want to try to uh, finish installing the ice chiller box and cut down that hose and get everything rerouted and I also thought of something else, so if I take that hose that has the fill neck on it and I flip it around, if I take it off the intercooler and off the heat exchanger and flip both sides around, I'll have a longer hose to go from the heat exchanger up to the ice box and then the shorter hose that's going from the heat exchanger to the fill neck now, I'll be able to use to go from the ice box to the intercooler. So I shouldn't have to buy any extra hose, I just gotta flip it around and pull that uh, fill neck out of the way and then 
I'll be able to use that fill neck for the grain dam. And so now all I'm going to be lacking is the intercooler pump. So uh, I'm going to quit rambling on. I'm going to go inside. I'm going to get this uh, fuel pump assembly and this E85 pump. And uh, I'll give you guys another update. All right, you guys. I'm inside. I've been working on this pump. So in order to get this thing apart without breaking everything on the bottom, there's this little little piece on some some assemblies are black some of them they're white but it goes right here on the bottom and it pops in there like this into those two holes and it is pressed down in there hard and i guess these fittings i don't know what they click into but it does not want to let this thing come apart with that being in there so i had to pop that off then once i got that off you have to unplug this wire for the fuel level from the top up here and then once you get that disconnected then you use pick or some pry tools i use this little knife and it's got three tabs there's one there one there and one there and they click in onto the bottom part of the assembly in three places and so pretty much i just got got my knife worked in there got it like this and to where you can pull it over the little notches and then you just gotta kind of slide it down and then go to the next one and slide it down and go to the next one and slide it down and once i got all three of those um popped off and got this bottom piece off then this just came off so now i've got that apart so now this is the the tricky part so <clears throat> as you can see how this whole thing goes so i'm gonna have to probably pull the sock off completely and see how this will click on to the new pump and probably gonna have to squeeze this tab and the tab on the other side there there's two white tabs and maybe this will just pull out the bottom i'm not for sure but i've got to figure something out with this thing so i'm gonna keep working on this and i'll give you guys another update all right, y'all, so I've been working on this for a few minutes, so I figured it out. So this is the new pump that comes in the assembly, and it comes inside of this plastic thing. And this plastic piece slides into the assembly, and these three notches here go in to these three notches here. And then this pump slides inside of this, and then this bottom sock actually clicks into the assembly part here on this side and over here on the other side right there. And so that's how I got this whole, whole piece out was by prying and pushing these two tabs in at the same time and the whole thing comes out the bottom. Then once I got that loose, I had to pry there's a tab there and a tab on this side and you pry both those out at the same time and this piece comes out so i was able to get all that out of there get it all out so i was trying to put the am85 pump inside of this and it just would not fit through this upper ring here so i took this and just slid it in there to see how it fit and it doesn't lock in place at all the sock is what locks it in place. So I just got the sock to fit on the AM E85 pump. And it slides right up in there. This clicks into place and it holds it. So then you just tuck the sock back under there. And just like that the AM85 pump is now in there. So now the only thing I have to do is hook up this. I've got to undo this clamp. And I'm just going to... Pull this clamp off and then pull this whole uh, piece here off. And I will just reinstall that back into there. And then I will take that, slide it over this, and I'll put one of these worm drive clamps on it. And that will hold that down onto the pump. And then everything else should just plug in. Um, this wire for the basket should just plug back in up there. 
this wire already plugs into the AM85 pump. It will just click right in. So the only other thing I have to do is just get this off of this pump and get it onto the AM85 pump. And then I can put the basket back together, plug everything in, and it should be good to go back into the car. So I'm going to keep working on this, and uh, I will give you guys another update here in a few once I have this all back together. All right, y'all. So I got it figured out finally. So I've got this back in here. I've got the plug plugged in. I've got my hose uh, swapped over. So what I had to do was I just had to use a flathead and just pry that old clamp apart. And I tried to save it, but I just couldn't save it. And so I just had to bend it apart and then I had to heat up the plastic with a lighter and to be able to actually twist it from the other pump. Yeah, there it is. So it has those grooves on it right there. And so that plastic was just like sitting on those grooves and you could tell they like heat, heat shrinked it or melted it on to that pump uh, assembly. So yeah, I just had to heat it up and twist and then I was able to get it popped off that, uh, that nipple on that pump and I had to cut just this little bit off with a, a knife and just cut that little bit off the bottom right there and then heated it up with my lighter again shoved it on put the clamp on and it's nice and tight and then got it all put back together so now the only thing i have left to do is i just have to put all of this back into the uh the basket itself and I, you got to make sure that this o-ring here goes back into that big uh, piece there and then other than that that's really it and then uh, you have to plug that one plug back in up there up top and I've already got the pump plugged in it clicked into place so we're good to go and then this one clicked back into place you want to make sure it clicks into place there's also an o-ring uh, in inside of there and you want to make sure that o-ring goes gets back in in there like it's supposed to be and that way you don't have any problems with it. But so it is together. The E85 pump is in the new assembly. The sock is on all the way. Everything's seated. It's locked in place so the pump can't fall out. So it's good to go. So now all I got to do is slide this back inside of the basket. Make sure that all three tabs click in place. And then plug this plug back in up top up there. And this pump's finished. So ready uh, to go back in the car so i'm gonna get this click back together and get this bottom piece on and i'll give you guys another update all right y'all so fuel pump is 100 percent complete it is all back together got my am85 pump in there it's nice and solid it's got a, the brand new sock on it brand new uh, fuel level sensor or the arm, everything on its new hole, canister. Got my line popped back into place, and I made sure that both tabs clicked back into place. So, shouldn't have any leaks there. Got the line melted on and tightened down with the clamp. Made sure my O-ring was on correctly on this. I don't even know what that is. Fuel pressure regulator, I guess. But, uh, yeah, I made sure the O-ring was on there all the way and how it was supposed to be before I clicked it back together and then I also got the piece in the bottom pressed back in and that bigger uh, spot right there is that's the tube where this o-ring goes on that fuel pressure regulator so got to make sure everything goes back together exactly how it was but I mean really with this uh, TRQ brand uh, fuel pump, it was like 85 bucks, 86 bucks, something like that. And, I mean, it is a little bit different from the last pump, 
But actually, I like this one a lot better. Like it's, yeah, the, I like this. So, <clears throat> but yeah, so fuel pump is ready. So, uh, hopefully, uh, it's not super cold tomorrow. And as long as it's decent weather, then I'll be dropping the tank again, swapping the fuel pump assembly with the E85 pump again, and then reinstalling everything back in the car for hopefully the last time and uh, see what happens. So uh, y'all stay tuned and I'll give you guys another update tomorrow. All right, you guys. So I made it over here to the house. Just got the car jacked up and put on jack stands. Got some tools. Got the power tools inside. Got the new pump assembly with the freshly installed E85 pump. So now it's just a, uh, a repeat of last week. Last weekend. I'm dropping this tank out again. So I'm going to get this tank out and then uh, I'll give you guys another update once I have the tank out. Alright y'all, so I got the old pump out. It's over there. Got the new pump in. I used my wire and my battery. And I've already primed it. So I know everything's working. It's all good to go. So I got all my lines plugged back in. Slid back under there. I just got to uh, reconnect my AN fitting to the new pump assembly. And then I can start putting it back up there into place. So I'm going to take a break and go get something to eat. And I'll give you guys another update. Alright you guys. So it's going on 5 o'clock. But I got my AM fitting hooked back up to the assembly. So I just went ahead and plugged it in up there to the car. And I'm just going to go turn the key off and on. Make sure everything's working as it should before I get it all reinstalled in the car so I'm just gonna prime it a few times and try to start her up make sure we don't have any leaks definitely started up a hell of a lot easier that time than it has with that stock fuel pump since last week so all right I'm gonna call that a win I'm gonna go ahead and unplug that plug scoot the tank back forward get the jack underneath it start raising it back up into place and start getting everything hooked back up and uh, I'll give you guys another update okay guys so it's 5.45. I finally got the tank all back up into place. Got both straps bolted back in. And I was about to get it off the jack stand. I still got to get the heat shield on. But before I throw the heat shield back on, I just want to make sure she still just fires right up. So, see how she does. Fires right up. Oh yeah.
shield on and uh, get her off the jack stands then once I have everything complete back on the ground I'll give you guys another update alrighty so I've got my heat shield back on got my clips back in so it's on there so now I can lower her down So, now, start her back up. She fire up. Right up. So, right there at the full mark. I need to finish hooking up my ice chiller box. Gotta cut that one line down. I'll get that done this weekend. But that's good progress. At least now she has the correct fuel pump again. Not that shitty stock one that was going out and whining. I'm happy. I'm super happy. Alright, I guess uh, I'm going to get all these tools picked up and uh, start getting everything put up because I'm hungry. I'm ready to go get something to eat. So, I'm going to get everything picked up and I'll give you guys another update whenever I'm headed out. Give you all a little pull. Alright, YouTube. So, it is 6.35 p.m. And I got everything picked up. Oh, fire's right up. Man. That's tremendous. Got to check engine light. Let's run our code. Scan. Codes. O300.
seems to pull a lot better. Pulls much harder having plenty of fuel. much happier with the new pump that's awesome so but I'm uh, pulling up to McDonald's so I'm gonna run to the drive-thru get some food probably run over here to QT give me a couple of drinks and head back to the house hey guys so I just went up to the store it is Sunday morning it's about noon somewhere in there and I don't know, dude. That new fuel pump is just opened the car up, man. She is running amazing. <coughs> so I just want to give you guys a little pull. Not that. Hold on. She runs so much better now, getting the proper fueling. 
I'm very happy with it. running so good but yeah guys that's uh that's where i'm at right now so uh, i just got back over to the house uh, i'm about to go and eat something i just had to run up and grab some drinks so we'll go eat something i'll give you guys another update here in a bit all right y'all so it is sunday it's about noon maybe 12 30 um but yeah, the car is running so much better with that new assembly with the AEM E85 fuel pump. So, what I want to do today is finish getting this uh, ice chiller box installed. So, I'm jacking up the car. I'm going to throw it on jack stands. I've got to get under here and pull my hose off of the uh, heat exchanger so I can drain heat exchanger and this whole system into a bucket and then that way I'm not losing all my coolant and super coolant and I'll just drain whatever comes out and then I'll remove this whole uh, this hose here from the intercooler and from the heat exchanger and I'll pull the headlight out and remove that fill neck and I just got to Flip the hoses around to where the long ones come in from the heat exchanger up to the ice box and then I'll take the short one that's going from the fill neck up here to the or that's going from the fill neck down to the heat exchanger now will go from this fitting back over to the intercooler <clears throat> and then I'll be able to refill everything with the uh, ice chiller box so that is the goal for today and then uh, also, my buddy Garrett that bought the 06 is coming over. Uh, it's got a transmission leak from the cooler lines. Which is like crazy. This one just had a leak from the cooler lines. So, he's he's going to come over and we're going to get it tightened up and check the fluid. I got fluid right there. So, I'm going to get him taken care of. But, uh, yeah, I want to try to get this, this uh, redone today and get that chiller box hooked up so it's actually fully functional. And... Yeah, she's uh, just about ready to go to the dyno. And then once I go to the dyno, I can throw the 80s back in and go E85 and really make some power. So, but yeah, I'm going to get this thing uh, uh, drained out and get up on jack stands. And I'll give you guys another update. All right, y'all. So, I got the uh, hose here disconnected. And I'm just letting it drain. So... I'm just going to keep letting it do its thing, and uh, I'll come back to you guys once it stops dripping and draining. Alright y'all, so while I'm letting that drain, I decided to check everything out, and look you here. We have definite play. Got a bad wheel bearing on this side. So, uh, looks like I'm going to have to order wheel bearings as well. So, but yeah, you can see how ripped up that strut boot is. The rears are leaking, and every time I hit a bump, I hear them go, Ch So, I know the rear struts are bad. Like, the, uh, they're just blown out already. So, I've got all four on the way. I've got two new axles on the way. Which the one on the driver's side over here, whatever, it doesn't have any play this way or this way. 
but I don't know, it kind of sounds like maybe the axle and this is that cheap one that I got on eBay for like 40 bucks or 50 bucks or something I don't even remember how much it was but it was definitely a cheaper uh, axle and it was a lot skinnier so I don't know, I'm just waiting for these all these new parts to come in and that's all I can really do on the suspension stuff and then most of my front tires are already getting worn out doing too many burnouts The one on the driver's side is a little bit worse Especially that inside edge Look at that, Ugh. Look at that. No bueno. Uh, but either way, she's coming along. I'm gonna get her fixed up. So I'm just gonna, I guess, wait for this to finish draining. I just wanted to show y'all that. And uh, yeah, once that's done draining, I can go ahead and start disconnecting everything from up here. Probably gonna turn the pump on and just run the pump so it will circulate everything back out. And uh, then we should be good to go. So, y'all give me a few and I'll give you guys another update. Alright, so made a little bit of progress. I made a little bit of a mess. But got her drained out. I've got the hose already uh, fully removed. Got the fill neck out right there. So now... I just, uh, it was this side over here, closest to the firewall, so I had to remove that hose, and then I just pulled the hose down, and ran it all the way down back to the, uh, heat exchanger, and then it gave me plenty of room just to snake it on to that other fitting right down there, so it's on, I just have to put a, uh, clamp on it down there, it's kind of a pain in the ass because that wire harness is in the way but it's on there so I've got to get one of these clamps uh, on there and have to use my long extension and tighten it down from up here and then once I get that tightened down then I just gotta kind of snake this one right under the fuse box and trim that down to fit right there where I need it to and then throw a clamp on that one and then it's hooked up and then all I got to do is just filter the crap out of that coolant and fill it back up from right here. And then once she's filled back up it's good to go. <clears throat> Cycle it and make sure she's full and, and good and that's it so. Uh, yeah, I just want to give y'all an update on it. Sorry I didn't like show every little thing But I only had to disconnect the bottom side I didn't have to disconnect the top one because it goes straight over to the pump and then the pump is the one that was, Pumps it all the way up and around So this is the hose that goes straight down to the pump And it just pumps it straight up and through the intercooler and it will come through the intercooler over here into the ice box and then run back down through the heat exchanger. I know it's kind of backwards, but that's just how I'm going to have to run it for now. And so it can come out of the engine and go through the ice box and then go through. So, I don't know. It should still do its thing and help cool it. And if, if I get this thing full of ice with it being aluminum, it should stay pretty chilly. Like, there's nothing in it. And it's really cold right now. And it's only about... 45 or 50 out here. It's not too bad <clears throat> But uh, yeah, she's coming along so I'm gonna keep working on her and I'll give you guys another update All right, y'all so I got My fitting down here is on got my hose clamp on So that's all nice and tight You can see how it routes and just goes right down behind the horns and then comes out underneath right here and runs right inside the lip 
on the front bumper and then right into the heat exchanger <clears throat> and then the other line runs from the top of the heat exchanger over here to the pump then the pump pumps it up routes around here down into the intercooler and then comes out the other side of the intercooler and it comes right here and you see all I got to do is just trim this hose <clears throat> put my last clamp on slide it on and then pretty much just zip tie these together and I'm probably going to route this hose on the back side of this little hose here so that way it'll kind of help keep it up off of the belt a little bit as well and I'm definitely going to have to zip tie it up to something just to help keep it off of the belt because I don't want it rubbing anything but man other than that we're golden like she's doing great so I'm going to finish getting this thing hooked up and then I'll give you guys another update whenever I'm ready to uh I've got to filter all that to get the crap out and we're going to fill this up and top her back off and I'll give you guys another update right before I start filling her back up all right you guys so everything is tight I've got my fitting down there tight got my fitting here tight both of these fittings are re or clamps are retight got my clamp down here tight so everything is tight everything is plumbed so all I have to do is just zip tie these up to where it's not laying on the belt right there and then put my crossbar back on and fill it up so it's almost time almost time so I'm gonna keep working on her and get this I gotta find my zip tie so I can get these zip tied and I'll give you guys another update all right you guys so everything is all tightened up I got my hose here zip tied up to this clamp which is clipped to this crossbar so that's helping pull that hose up and now it is not I can't really get it on video but it's not um, rubbing the belt at all now so I'm happy with it it's hard to tell but I can almost get my fingers between that bottom hose and the belt now so as long as these zip ties hold up then should be good so now it is time to pop this cap off i need to strain all of this through a strainer into probably just back into the uh the jug there with my funnel and then that way it can all drain back in there and then i can just use the funnel with uh my jug there and fill this back up and so that's still about half full of coolant so should be good and then then uh, I can get this get her off the jack stands and we can go from there so I'm gonna keep working on her and uh, give you guys another update all right so I put some coffee filters inside of the funnel so I'm just going to strain this out. It's going really slow. It's going down really slow. I put like four filters in there. But it's definitely catching shit. It's doing what I wanted it to do, so. I guess I'm going to let that finish, uh, draining through these filters and keep going and then once i get all of it strained out i'll give you guys another update all right so i've got everything strained out into my jug over there i got the cap pulled off i rinsed out the funnel so shouldn't be any debris left in there so i'm about to grab this jug 
Then we can just slowly start topping her off. And then I'm gonna put you guys down here to where you can see underneath. Make sure we're not having any leaks. Guys, watch to see if we have any leaks from anything. So, not seeing any leaks anywhere. Not seeing any leaks from the heat exchanger. Not seeing anything from the inner cooler, from the boxes. I guess I kind of need to jump my relay so I need to open my fuse box and get that wire so I can just touch it up here to the power and then I'll be able to kick the pump on and that will start circulating the pump and getting everything circulated through the system and so here let me get this fuse box open and grab that wire and I'll give you guys another update all right y'all so I've got the uh, wire undone from the fuse and I've just got it stuck on this positive terminal I'm waiting for it to circulate. I don't see anything coming out of the the return from the inner cooler I don't see anything coming out of there yet Nothing so I guess I'm going to go get some water and add some water to this to see if the more pressure will push it down that uh, that drain down there, down this hose, down to the heat exchanger. So, y'all give me a few and I'll give you guys another update. Alright y'all, so made a lot of progress on it. So as you can tell, she's flowing. Got all the air out of the system. Doing great. So I'm just letting it run. Just trying to get all the all the air out of the system. And been doing this for about 10 minutes, that's it. And she finally Finally started spitting, got most of the air out, so I'm just going to give it about five more minutes or so, make sure everything's good to go, and uh, then I'll, I think I'll be good to cap it and call this uh, installed, so I'm not seeing any, any leaks, I did have one leak at first on the fitting down there, and but uh the hose just wasn't all the way tight the clamp so got it snug down just a little bit more it stopped leaking it was running down the uh frame rail right there dripping so i put that five gallon bucket underneath the car to catch it but it was just a few drips and once i gave it like another turn with the uh the eight millimeter and the ratchet it stopped dripping so I'm happy with it. Hopefully this holds up and it don't have any issues. So yeah, I'm very happy with this. For 160 bucks, 170 bucks, really can't complain. It's just it's a beautiful piece and it works great. And it was intended for an S550 Mustang. So if it was intended for a V8 having boost to run, I'm sure it would uh It'll work very good with this uh, V6. So, I'm happy. Like I said, I'm going to let that run for about five more minutes. And then I'll give you guys another update. Alright, I'm going to go turn the key on. And just make sure everything's working properly. All right. 
Alright. It looks like everything's working properly. Boom, there we go. Everything's working how it's supposed to. Alright, so the new ice box is plumbed. Everything is bled. It's it's good. She's full. So now I can throw the headlight back in. And I can go ahead and cap off this uh, ice chiller box. And the next thing I need to do is I got this T right here. So what I'm going to do is on the back of the engine back here where the map sensor is it's down there somewhere yeah where that map sensor is there's a vacuum line that runs over here to uh, the lower intake manifold down there and so it's a hard hard plastic line that runs back there and it's just like these these are just a bunch of different pieces of that same line just just like this one this is the rear that's the rear when it goes from the lower intake back around something like that so what i'm what i'm going to do is i'm just going to cut it in it like in the middle around in here and just cut like a couple inches out about like that and i'm just going to sandwich that in there and then i'm going to take my vacuum line for my boost gauge off of the tea tree and it's going to go into that uh, elbow right there <clears throat> and so that right there should fix my boost gauge not working <clears throat> and showing boost and then uh, I still have to just run that wire to power and I could even run it out here to the fuse box if I wanted to but I think I'm just going to run it to like the cigarette lighter or something because it just has to light up the gauges and right now it's only the boost gauge so it's just barely any power for that uh that gauge light but yeah other than that that that's all that's left is fixing that boost line and then wiring up the light and then she's pretty much i i want to say complete but not 100 percent complete i've still got to put my uh fender liners back in as you can tell my uh filter is just right there and then my ecm's right up in there too so i've got the fender liners over here need to get both of those back in I have the undercover uh, guard that goes underneath the front bumper in here and uh, it's over at the storage so I can't really do anything about that and for me to put that back on I'm gonna have to cut out um, I'm gonna have to cut out for around the uh, heat exchanger because the heat exchanger sits lower than the front bumper does so I'm going to have to cut out a piece so that piece will still go in there and this will just stick out the bottom of it. But man, other than that, made some great progress this weekend. So I'm stoked. Got the, the new AM85 fuel pump back in with the brand new assembly. And I think it's a way better quality assembly than the first one that I used. So another like a note, y'all, like... I'm, I'm kind of cheap when it comes to, to buying stuff because I've got so many projects. So I buy a lot of stuff on eBay. But for your fuel pump assembly, don't cheap out on it. For fueling, you never want to cheap out on fueling. So I didn't cheap out on the rails. I didn't cheap out on the injectors. Like, I didn't cheap out on the pump. I got the best AN line, 6AN line I could get. I got a nice, big, fat ZZP stainless filter down there. Just do not skimp or cheap out on your fueling system because that's one of your main causes of knock and getting KR and blowing up your engines. So never skimp on your fueling. So just yeah, spend the extra 40 bucks or so and get the better, better brand uh, pump assembly. The one I'm using is TRQ. It's like trusted, reliable quality. And like I said, it was like 80, it was like $30 more than the first one that I got. So really not that big of a deal. And it's way better quality and everything works how it's supposed to. My fuel gauge works properly now. 
Like, I'm not, ha I haven't had any issues. The car fires right up. And before, like, even with the AM85 pump in before, I would still have to turn the key off and on a couple times. So, yeah, like I said, just, just do yourself a favor. So that way you don't have to go back and do it again like I did. So, yeah, just do yourself a favor. Don't skimp on your fueling. But pretty much, uh, yeah, I think now I can get this cap back on here. Like I said, she just sets down into place. And then you turn the middle handle, flip her down, and that vacuum tights it down. Get it. Yeah, there we go. So, she is on there. She's closed up. I'm super stoked. So happy. So now I just got to get the headlight in. And, uh, and yeah, that's that. So, y'all stay tuned. And I'll give you guys another update. All right, you guys. <clears throat> so, I got the car back on the ground. Off of jack stands. <clears throat> got the headlight back in. And then I came back here. And if you see my vacuum line right there. And I ran it right over here to a T. And then I just took that, uh, that line that goes into that 90 into the map. And I just cut it. Cut a one inch piece of it out. And then just put each side in each side of that T. And then it tees off and goes inside and over to the boost gauge. So now I'm going to go start the car. Make sure everything's still working properly. And I want to make sure that this boost gauge works. And actually shows positive boost and not just vacuum. Oh yeah, see now it's working. So I'm going to let her warm up. for a moment. We are running, baby. I got a bad wheel bearing on the passenger side and I think I've got a broke axle on the driver's side so uh, supposed to have a couple of a couple of packages are supposed to be here tomorrow a couple is gonna be here Tuesday two or three is gonna be here on Wednesday I've got like 10 packages coming in so here in the next few days we'll have a uh, quite a bit of parts for and so I'm getting her fixed back up again, so. But yeah, I'm gonna let her warm up while I pick up all my tools and get everything picked up and lock the door. And then I'll uh, give you guys another update before I go on my cruise test drive.
check engine light. Looking at 74 gallon, 0.74 gallons per hour, 48 intake air temp, 155 water temp. How's that boost looking? quicker. guys so um today is tuesday and we had the day off because it was just piss pouring down rain this morning and it's still pretty wet so the roofs are all going to be wet so we're not going to be able to work today and it's supposed to rain all week so it's going to be probably going to be a shitty week but uh yeah i just went driving around uh, went and worked on my ex's Buick and put an alternator on it. And so I just got back and the 07 is running amazing. She's running great. Like, awesome. So, I'm very happy with the car. Um, I'm waiting for all the new suspension stuff to get here. So, the rear struts and the lower control arms are supposed to be delivered today. And then the front struts are supposed to be delivered tomorrow. 
And then I think the axles are supposed to be delivered on Thursday. And uh, I still got to order the wheel bearings. So, because I thought I ordered the axles with the wheel bearings, but I didn't. I only ordered the axles. So, I still got to order the wheel bearings because the wheel bearing on the passenger side is bad. But hopefully, I should have everything by like Friday or Saturday. And I'm just going to do a video and just replace everything at once. And so that'll be the next video. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the 07, she's running awesome. And the boost gauge is working properly now. So I'm I'm super excited. I, I really can't wait to throw the 80s in and go to ethanol, go to E85, and make even more power because it's already fun. Like, she's quick. I love it. And... But yeah, it's it's a fun car. So that's going to be it for this video. Um, I guess stay tuned for all the full suspension swap. And uh, yeah, so smash that like button. Leave me a comment down below. Subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.